Uh, the next sutta is 5.12.114. On one occasion, when the Exalted One was dwelling among the Magadis at Anda Kavinda, the Venerable Ananda came to him, saluted and sat down at one side. And the Exalted One spoke thus to the Venerable Ananda, so seated. Ananda, the monks that are novices, lately gone forth, come newly to this Dhamma Vinaya. Those monks, Ananda, verily must be made to take heed of and enter into and stand fast in five things. What five? Say thus, Come you, sirs, be virtuous. Live restrained in the restraint of the Patimoka, perfect in conduct and resort, seeing danger in the smallest fault, and endeavor to train in the steps of the training. Thus must they be made to take heed of and enter into and stand fast in the restraint of the Patimoka. And say thus, Come you, sirs, live with the sense doors guarded, guarding mindfulness, skillful in mindfulness, with the ways of the mind well watched, possessed of a mind that is guarded and aware. Thus must they be made to take heed of and enter into and stand fast in the restraint of the senses. And say thus again to them, Come you, sirs, be little in talk, make a limit to talk. Thus must they be made to take heed of, enter into, and stand fast in the limiting of talk. And say thus to them, Come you, sirs, be forest dwellers, seek you the ways of the forest wilderness, the outland bed and seat. Thus must they be made to take heed of, enter into, and stand fast in seclusion as to the body. And say thus to them, Come, you sirs, be right in view, seeing right. Thus must they be made to take heed of, enter into, and stand fast in having right view. Ananda, the novices lately gone forth, come newly to this Dhamma Vinaya, must be made to take heed of, enter into, and stand fast in these five things. That's the end of the sutta. It's quite an important sutta for monks. The Buddha is saying that new monks eh, must be advised to practice these five things. Eh. The first one is to live restrained according to the Patimoka. The Patimoka is the set of the precepts eh, for monks eh, who, have who have obtained the higher ordination. Uh, the Patimoka consists of 227 precepts eh, for monks. Eh. So the first one is they have to train in these uh, precepts of the Patimoka. The second one, the Buddha says that they should restrain the sense doors, uh, guard the sense doors, uh, and always be mindful uh, and aware. Uh. The third one is they should limit their talk, uh, talk uh, only beneficial talk, uh, uh, not to talk un unbeneficial talk. The fourth one is the Buddha advised them to be forest dwellers. This word forest uh, is a translation, I think, of the Pali word Aranya. Aranya is a secluded place. It can be a forest, can be a cave, can be up in a hill, etc. And uh, the Buddha... Um, Generally, the Buddha advised that uh, new monks uh, should train under a senior monk for five years, but the Buddha made an exception uh, if a monk uh, is uh, fairly knowledgeable in the Dhamma and, uh, and Vinaya, even though he has not completed five years, uh, he can go and live alone if he wants to meditate uh, because uh, people are different. There are some monks uh, who have... Um, are quite capable, uh, even though they are new monks, uh, then the Buddha said uh, they can go and live alone in forest areas. Uh, that is, practicing seclusion as to the body, that means kaya viveka. Kaya is body, viveka is seclusion. Then the fifth one is to have right view. And the way to have right view uh, is to study the discourses of the Buddha, the early discourses of the Buddha to obtain right view. Uh, these are the uh, advice uh, that uh, new monks uh, should be given. The next sutta is 5.13.121. On one occasion, when he was dwelling, when he was staying near Vesali at the gabled hall in Mahavana, the exalted one, uh, rising from seclusion in the evening, visited the hall of the sick 
And the exalted one saw a monk, weak and ailing, and at the sight he sat down on a seat made ready. And when he was seated, the exalted one addressed the monk, saying, Monks, if five things forsake not any one weak and ailing, for him this may be expected. Before long, by destroying the asavas, he will enter and abide in the emancipation by mind, the emancipation by wisdom, which is free of the asavas, realizing this by his own knowledge, even here and now. What five? Here in monks, a monk abides seeing the unattractiveness of the body, is conscious of the satiation or clawing of food, conscious of distaste as to the world, perceives impermanence in the conditioned, and his inner self is well set on the thought of death. Monks, if these five things forsake not anyone weak and ailing, for him this may be expected. Before long he will enter and abide in emancipation. So this sutta is the end of the sutta. This sutta is talking about the five contemplations uh, that is very helpful uh, for a person uh, to obtain liberation uh, even when a person is very sick and weak and ailing uh, if he practices uh, uh, these five contemplations uh, intensely uh, then uh, he can obtain liberation uh. the first one is contemplating the unattractiveness of the body uh, sometimes it's translated as the loathsomeness of the body the second one is the conscious of the satiation uh, of food, uh, the surfeit of of uh, surfeit uh, uh, of food, uh, being tired of food, uh, and uh, like a feeling of uh, too much uh, food. Uh. Second one, conscious of the distaste as to the world, uh, to to be able to see uh, that there's uh, the world is not so attractive as it seems. Uh, uh. Then uh, impermanence, seeing impermanence in the conditioned, all conditioned things, I mean all things in the world uh, are impermanent, they keep on changing. And uh, last one, uh, the inner self is well set on the thought of death. That means uh, uh, you can see uh, that uh, you contemplate death, uh, always contemplating death. Uh. So these are the uh, few uh, contemplations uh, which are very important. The unattractiveness of the body, uh, the satiation of food, the clawing of food, the stays of the world, impermanence of conditioned things, uh, that means all things in the world, and constant contemplation of death. Uh. The next sutta is 5.13.123. Monks, possessing five qualities, a sick man is an ill help to himself. What five? He treats not himself with what is beneficial. The first one, uh, he treats not himself with what is beneficial. <clears throat> the second, he knows no measure in his treatment. Third one, he ap applies not the medicines. Fourth one, he sets not he sets not out the extent of his illness to one who to one who tends him in goodness of heart, saying, In going it goes thus, when it returns it comes so, while it is with me it is just thus. Nor is he the kind of man who endures the onset of bodily aches and pains, racking, shooting, stabbing, bitter, galling, life-taking. Monks, possessing these five qualities, a sick man is an ill help to himself. That's the end of the sutta. Here, this sutta is saying, uh, uh, such a person uh, is not helpful to himself uh, when he's sick. The first one, he does not know what is beneficial, what is not beneficial. The second one, he does not know measure. That means uh, even what is beneficial, if he takes too much of it, uh, that means he doesn't know the, the measure that he should take. Uh, uh, when even medicine, he take too much of it, uh, it can be harmful. Uh. The third one, he does not apply the medicines uh, when he needs, when he should, uh, when he should use the medicines, uh, he does not use them. The fourth one, he does not tell the person uh, who is tending him uh, about his sickness uh, in detail, uh, in in clearly. Uh, uh. And uh, the fifth one, he cannot endure uh, bodily pains. Uh, uh. And this type of person uh, is uh, does not help himself much uh, when he's sick. 
The next sutta, 5.13.124. Monks possessing five qualities, one who waits on the sick is not fit to help the sick. What five? He cannot prepare medicines. Number two, he does not know what is beneficial from what is unbeneficial. Offers what is not beneficial, does not offer what is beneficial. <clears throat> Thirdly, in hope of gain, he waits on the sick, not out of goodwill. Fourthly, he loads to, to move, to remove excrement or urine or vomit or spittle. Fifth, nor can he from time to time instruct, rouse, gladden and satisfy the sick, the sick with Dharma talk. Monks possessing these five qualities, one who waits on the sick is not fit to help the sick. That's the end of the sutta. Here uh, is talking about the person uh, who is not suitable uh, to tend to a sick person. Uh, the first one, he does not how, know how to prepare medicines. The second one, he does not know what is beneficial for the sick person or what is not beneficial for the sick person. The third one, he has a uh, ulterior motive when he tends on when he tends to the sick person. Uh, he's not doing out, it out of goodwill, but he's trying to get something out of it. Uh. The fourth one, he he does not like to remove excrement or urine or vomit or spittle. Uh. He, he can't stand these things. Uh. And then the last one, he does not know how to give beneficial talk. Uh. Uh, um, he does not know how to... In, uh, talk, uh, uh, encouraging talk, beneficial talk uh, to the sick person. Uh, these are the five qualities uh, which makes a person uh, not qualified uh, to look after a sick person. The next sutta is 5.13.127. Monks pursuing five courses, a monk is not fit to draw apart from the Sangha or order. What five? Here in monks, a monk is not content with any robe, with any arms, with any lodging, with any medicines, and he dwells full of lustful purpose. Monks pursuing these five courses, a monk is not fit to draw apart from the Sangha. That's the end of the Sutta. This refers to living alone. There are certain monks who are capable of living alone, certain monks who are not capable of living alone. And here is the monk who is not capable of living alone. Uh, if he's not easily um, uh, satisfied uh, with any type of robe or food or lodging or medicines, and also he has a lot of lust, uh, if he has a lot of lustful thoughts, uh, then wherever he goes, uh, uh, even though he is physically alone, but he's not alone because these lustful thoughts uh, are his, his, his company, uh, keeping him company. So such a monk uh, is not fit uh, to dwell alone. The next sutta is 5.13.129. Monks, five are the lost in hell who lie festering, incurable. What five? By him has his mother been deprived of life, his father an arahant. By him with evil thought has the Tathagata's blood been drawn. By him has the Sangha been embroiled or split. Verily monks, these are the five lost in hell who lie festering incurable. That's the end of the sutta. This sutta refers to the five most heavy karma that a person can do, which will, which will bring him to hell for a long, long time. The first one, he kills his mother. Second one, he kills his father. Third one, he kills an arahan. Fourth one, intentionally, he causes the, the Buddha to bleed. That means he harms a Buddha. The fifth one, he causes uh, a harmonious uh, sangha of, man, of monks uh, to, to be divided. Uh. Uh, he, he becomes a batu api. Uh. He causes the, the monks to split. Uh. And that uh, is a very heavy karma. Uh. The next sutta is 5.13.130. Monks, there are these five losses. What five? Loss of kin. 
loss of wealth, loss by disease, loss of virtue, and loss of view or right view. Monks, not caused by loss of kin, wealth, or by disease, do beings on the breaking up of the body after death arise in the wayward way, the ill way, the abyss, hell. Monks, caused by loss of virtue or by loss of view, do beings on the breaking up of the body after death arise in the wayward way, the ill way, the abyss, hell. Verily, monks, these are the five. Monks, there are these five prophets. What five? Prophet of kin, prophet of wealth, prophet of health, prophet of virtue, and prophet of view. Monks, not caused by prophet of kin, wealth, or health, do beings on the breaking up of the body after death arise in the happy way, the heaven world. Monks, caused by prophet of virtue or by prophet of view, do beings after death arise in the happy way, the heaven world. Verily, monks, these are the five. This, this sutta says uh, that a person uh, goes to hell because of loss of virtue uh, and loss of right view. Uh, that means he has wrong view uh, and he does not keep the precepts. And a person goes to heaven because of virtue uh, and because of right view. Uh. The other things, uh, loss of relatives or loss of wealth, loss of health, uh, that is not so important uh, as virtue and right view. Uh. Uh, that is why uh, studying the Dhamma is so important because it gives us right view. And from right view, uh, we will naturally uh, keep the precepts and attain virtue uh, or moral conduct. So always remember, right view is very, very important. Sutta number 5.13. The Buddha said, uh, Monks, the Raja who rolls the wheel, a Dhamma man, a Dhamma Raja, rolls on indeed no unroyal wheel. And when he had thus spoken, a certain monk said to the Exalted One, But who, Lord, is the Raja of the Raja, the roller of the wheel, the Dhamma man, the Dhamma Raja? It is Dhamma, Mang, said the Exalted One. Herein Mang, the Raja, the wheel roller, the Dhamma man, the Dhamma Raja, relies just on Dhamma, honors Dhamma, reveres Dhamma, esteems Dhamma, with Dhamma as his standard, with Dhamma as his banner, with Dhamma as his mandate. He sets a Dhamma watch and bar and ward for folk within his realm. He sets a Dharma watch and bar and ward for warrior and camp follower, for Brahmin and for householder, for town and country folk, for recluse and for Brahmin, for beast and bird alike. Thus indeed, Mang, that Raja setting a Dharma watch and bar and ward for folk and creatures within his realm rolls on the wheel by Dharma. And that wheel may not be rolled back by the hand of any hostile creature. Even so, Mang, the Tathagata, Arahan, Sama Sambuddha, a Dhamma man, a Dhamma Raja, relies just on Dhamma, honors Dhamma, reveres Dhamma, esteems Dhamma, with Dhamma as his standard, with Dhamma as his banner, with Dhamma as his mandate. He sets a Dhamma watch and bar and ward for Mang, saying, Follow you such a practice indeed, not that other. Follow you, follow you such a practice in word, not that other. Follow you such a practice in thought, not that other. Follow you such a livelihood, not that other. Seek you such a town or village, not that other. So too for nuns and lay disciples, both men and women. Thus indeed, Mang, that Tathagata, setting a Dhamma watch and bar and ward, for monk and nun, for lay disciple, both men and women, rolls on by Dhamma, the unsurpassed wheel of Dhamma. And that wheel may not be rolled back by recluse, Brahmin, Deva, Mara, Brahma, or by any in the world. That's the end of the sutta. Here the Buddha is saying uh, that the Buddha, the Dhamma king, uh, reveres Dhamma as Dhamma as his Raja. Uh, so even the Buddha 
as a raja, as a king, eh, which is the Dhamma. He honors Dhamma, he reveres Dhamma, he acts according to Dhamma. Remember the other day we read one sutta how the Buddha said, because of respect for Dhamma, whenever he teaches Dhamma, he takes a lot of care in teaching the Dhamma. So too for us, eh, we must always honor Dhamma and live our lives according to the Dhamma. The next sutta, 5.14.137 Monks, these five sleep little by night. They are much awake. What five? A woman longing for a man sleeps little by night, is much awake. So too, a man longing for a woman sleeps little by night, is much awake. A thief longing for booty, for what he wants to steal, eh? Sleep little by night, is much awake. A Raja, bent on royal business, sleeps little by night, is much awake. A monk, longing for bondage liberation, sleeps little by night, is much awake. Verily, monks, these five sleep little by night, they are much awake. It's the end of the sutta. So you see, there are different people have different reasons eh, for sleeping little at night, eh? some because of desires, the thief waiting to steal somebody's things, eh? the Raja, the king, eh? busy with all his office duties, eh? and the monk longing for liberation, eh? he's uh, tired of all this dukkha, so he strives very hard so that uh, he doesn't sleep much at night. Eh? But then, even though he doesn't sleep much, uh, he does need sleep. Uh, the more, uh, the more developed his mind is uh, by samadhi, uh, the little, uh, the uh, uh, he sleeps uh, the less. Uh. The next sutta is five point fifteen point hundred forty one. Monks, these five persons are found living in the world. What five? One who gives and despises a man. One who despises a man by living with him or lives with another and despises him. Eh? One who has a mouth to take in anything. One who wavers and one who is foolish and mind-tossed. And how, monks, does a person give and despise a man? Here in monks, a person to a person gives requisites, the rope, arms, lodging, and medicines, and things I give, this fellow receives, he gives and despises him. Thus, monks, a person gives and despises a man. And how, monks, does a person despise a man by living with him? Here in monks, a person lives with a person for two or three years. By living with him, he despises him. Thus, monks, a person despises a man by living with him. And how, monks, has a person a mouth to take in anything? Here in monks, a person while another is being spoken of in praise or blame, just promptly revels in it. Thus, monks, a person has a mouth to take in anything. And how, monks, does a person waver? Here in monks, a person is uncertain in faith, uncertain in devotion, uncertain in affection, uncertain in goodness. Thus, monks, a person wavers. And how, monks, is a person foolish and mind-tossed? Here in monks, a person does not know good conditions from bad, does not know blameworthy conditions from blameless, does not know low conditions from lofty, does not know whether conditions are evenly mixed with bright and dark qualities. Thus, monks, a person is foolish and mind-tossed. Verily, monks, these five persons are found living in the world. That's the end of the sutta. Here, the first one, the Buddha is talking about kind of person uh, who gives to another and because of that despises the other fellow. Like some people, uh, they don't have much respect for monks. Sometimes they give. In, um, like he, th he throws some things, you know, like giving to a beggar. And some people, they think monks receive all the time and they... 
they uh, because of that they don't like monks. Uh, uh. Some people they give and then they lose respect. The second one by living with another person, uh, a person uh, looks at all his faults uh, and learns to despise him. Uh. He forgets that he himself has faults. Uh. Uh, we all have faults. It's very easy to look at another person's fault. Eh? And the third one, he has a mouth to take in anything. While another person is being spoken of in praise or blame, just promptly revels in it. I suppose this is a type of person who is a gullible person. Eh? Whatever he hears, eh? he accepts eh? uh, without uh, investigating. Eh? And then the fourth person is a person who wavers. Uh, whatever he does, uh, he has a lot of, a lot of doubts. Uh, uh, and uh, doubts is, having doubts is, doubts is one of the five hindrances uh, that prevent us from seeing things as they really are. Uh, the mind is unsteady. And the only way we can overcome this doubt uh, is to have strong samadhi when the mind is very strong, eh? then whatever problem comes up, eh? we can examine it very clearly, then we won't have doubt. Eh? And the last person is a person who is foolish and mind-tossed. He cannot differentiate between good and bad conditions, eh? from blameworthy and blameless conditions. Eh? So, that's a foolish person. Eh? These are the different kinds of person found in the world. Eh? The next Uta is 5.15.143. Once, while he dwelt near Vesali at the gabled hall in Mahavana, the exalted one, early one morning, after dressing, took bowl and robe and entered Vesali for arms. Now at that time, about 500 Lichavis were meeting and seated at Sarandada shrine, and this talk occurred. Rarely are the five treasures revealed in the world. What five? Rarely is the elephant treasure revealed in the world. Rarely the horse treasure, the jewel treasure, the woman treasure, and rarely the householder treasure. Rarely are these five treasures revealed in the world. I'll just stop here for a moment. These people are talking about the five uh, rare things uh, that are... Uh, appear in the world uh, when a wheel-turning king, uh, a universal monarch, appears in the world. This universal monarch is a king uh, who has such so much blessings and merit uh, that uh, he is able to rule the whole world. And when he appears, uh, these treasures also appear and um, he owns them. Now to continue the sutta. Now these Lichavis had put a man in the road, saying, When, my man, you see the exalted one coming along, come and tell us. And the man saw the exalted one a good way off coming along, and he went and told the Lichavis, saying, Sirs, here comes this same exalted one, Arahan, Samasam Buddha, and now's the time to do what you meant. And the Lichavis approached the Exalted One, saluted him, and stood at one side. And so standing, they said, Lord, it were good if the Exalted One were to visit Sarandada shrine out of compassion. The Exalted One accepted in silence. And when he had come to the shrine, he sat down on the seat they had made ready. And so seated, he said this to the Lichavis, What did you talk of, O Lichavis, as you sat here together just now? What talk between you was interrupted? <coughs> Lord, as we sat together, the talk turned on how rarely the five treasures are revealed in the world. What five? Rarely is the elephant treasure revealed in the world. Rarely the horse treasure, the jewel treasure, the woman treasure, the householder treasure. Rarely are these five treasures revealed in the world. And the Buddha said, Truly with you, Lichavis, sense and thrall, talk between you turns to just to things of the flesh. Five, O Lichavis, are the treasures rarely revealed in the world. What five? The Tathagata, Arahan, Samasam Buddha is rarely revealed in the world. Rare in the world is a person able to teach Dhamma Vinaya, 
declared by the Tathagata, rare is a person able to appreciate the teaching. Rare in the world is a, pace, is a person who conducts himself in Dhamma by Dhamma, recognizing the teaching Dhamma Vinaya declared by the Tathagata. Rare in the world is a person who is grateful and thankful. Verily, O Lichavis, these are the five treasures rarely revealed in the world. That's the end of the Sutta. Here the Buddha declares a different set of five persons uh, rarely found in the world. The first one is a Buddha. I think remember I, I mentioned uh, that the Buddha said that he looked into the past 91 world cycles, uh, eight uh, kapas, uh, and he saw in the past 91 world cycles only six Buddhas appeared, which means it takes more on, on the average, uh, more than 10 kapas, 10 world cycles for a Buddha to, re, to appear. That's why the Buddha is very rare. The Sama some Buddha, one who teaches the Dhamma. The second one is a person able to teach Dhamma Vinaya according to the way like the Buddha teaches, according to the meaning taught by the Buddha, the pure Dhamma and the pure Vinaya. That means the original suttas of the Buddha and the Vinaya disciplinary code. And the third one is a person who is able to appreciate the teaching. Uh, one who appreciates the Dhamma taught by the Buddha. Huh? See, like tonight, huh, we have this talk, and not many people here. Only about 20 people. Huh? Huh? KL has so many people, and so many Buddhists, but uh, not many people huh, uh, really appreciate the Dhamma. Huh? Some people find the Dhamma very dry. But when you understand the Dhamma, then you learn, then you know huh, uh, how... Good is the Dhamma. And the fourth one, rare in the world, is a person who conducts himself in Dhamma by Dhamma. That means who lives his life according to Dhamma. Uh, that can only be a person who understands the Dhamma, huh? and that is quite rare. And the last one is a person who is grateful and thankful. Every, every so often uh, we come across ungrateful people. Uh, People whom we have done a service to and they don't appreciate and don't show gratitude. Nah? But that's the way the world is, so nah, we have to accept that. Nah?